Bots, 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 you're sick, you're mentally ill now. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're gonna react to sweet natural living sweet natural living is a raw vegan slash fruitarian channel that i used to watch when i was a raw vegan myself i used to watch it and i used to enjoy their content roughly five years ago one of their most watched videos was what i eat in a day high cup raw vegan fruitarian with the famous thumbnail that said fruit is human food by now it reached almost 600 000 views so back in the day they were a pretty big deal within the raw vegan community as i said i enjoyed their content so therefore i'm going to be respectful with my video review of their newest video titled all the supplements i take as a vegan athlete let's have a look hey guys so Hello. long overdue video here's the supplements that i take as a vegan athlete living in norway okay first of all i definitely believe that with an optimal diet and lifestyle theoretically supplements would not be necessary i would agree but I'm not living an optimal lifestyle. I'm a tropical animal. I'm living in Norway. And that means that I will have to take... It's honestly very surprising to me that he is still in that mind state. Back in the day, five or six years ago, yes, we all fell for the same vegan slash raw vegan agenda and we believed to be tropical beings. But it doesn't take much anthropological knowledge to understand your genetics. You are a man from Norway you are not a tropical being by no means did you truly believe six years later that you're some sort of tropical monkey that thrives on fruit is honestly shocking to me some supplements no matter what and then the food quality you know what has the food quality where was it grown even if you were in an optimal environment you know there are things that might not be optimal and we can sort of play around with nutrition a little bit modify it a little bit and i I'm all for that, uh, even if you are a purist fruitarian, maybe, um, as some of you probably are watching this channel, I used to be fruitarian. I'm still a proponent of a fruit-based diet. Humans are natural tropical frugivores and we thrive on a diet of fresh tropical fruits. So I have to assume that you're not a frugivore any longer. If it is our ideal natural diet, why don't you eat it any longer? Why do you feel you have to supplement it? That should explain everything you need to know, but I can see that you are in denial. I was in denial as well, so I'm not pointing the finger. When I was in Bangkok, I blamed it on the dirty water supply. I blamed it on the weather. I blamed it on the hygiene and whatnot. But I never blamed it on a vegan diet. It is essentially Stockholm Syndrome. But without that tropical fruit available without that quality ripe fruit available we have to make some other choices and that means per, well I, at least i feel like i have to and then i have to sort of make up for that a little bit through supplementation so anyway let's take the obvious ones first okay vitamin d and by the way just quickly i'm yeah. not sponsored by any of these brands i bought it all with my own money vitamin d super important because we are tropical animals we would get natural stuff vitamin d super important because we are tropical animals but if you really look into the science you will find that most people cannot synthesize nearly enough vitamin d3 especially not the european type yes guess what race is a reality that being said blacks need even more vitamin d but vitamin d comes from organ meats of course when the skin gets exposed to sunshine you can synthesize some but not enough you wouldn't need to supplement this if you would eat liver for example light every day in the tropics outside of the tropics we're not getting enough sunlight and therefore not enough vitamin d certainly not in norway certainly not during winter so i supplement with vitamin d3 but you do understand that this here is your natural habitat Again, you are a European man from Norway. This is your natural environment. In that natural environment, you would have to eat what comes naturally 
to you. Fruits that have to be imported to Norway are not natural. I can't believe I have to explain this, man. <laughs> 4,000 wow. international units per day. Yeah. Uh, important. And on that note, I'm not against supplements. If you want to supplement vitamin D3, that is fine. However, to base your argumentation on a perceived natural environment is flawed here. Next up, similar kind of thing, B12. Yeah. So if we were in our natural environment, <laughs> we would naturally be exposed to um, the soil. Okay, there would be bacteria Wrong. living in the soil and on the fruit that we were eating and we would we would not wash our hands constantly. That is so wrong in so many ways. If you look into somewhat quote unquote natural people and you see what kind of diets they eat, you will see that naturally the human being eats animal foods all over the globe. You can read Western A. Price on that note. So you see they're eating raw flesh, they're drinking blood, they're drinking milk, they're eating predominantly animal-based, no matter where you go. It's quite fascinating. There is no solid proof out there that we got vitamin B12 out of dirt. When you see gorillas in zoos, they're eating their own feces to get vitamin B12. In nature, they're eating insects and whatnot. We always ate animal foods. Herbivorous animals produce B12 in their guts. We cannot do that, but we can eat them. Okay, so we would naturally be exposed to that no. microflora that exists in the nature and no, all man. around us, really, even here. And those bacteria, they no. produce B12. No, bro. And so we would naturally get B12 that way. That's naturally not. how nature intended it to be. That's how all the animals in nature get their B12. It's produced by soil bacteria and also... Wow. Really, I'm flabbergasted. I haven't watched your channel in probably three years or so. And I really thought that after a while you will snap out of this delusion. But you're reciting the same old propaganda. Every animal out in nature eats other animals. Even the so-called herbivorous animals eat animals. Look it up. Inside our intestinal system. Because of our environment now, we because don't. of our habits, washing our oh, wow. hands all the time, etc., which is probably a good thing in the grand scheme of things, um, we're not getting enough B12. Perhaps also there's some issues with our gut flora now that we're not eating that optimal diet. Methylcobalamin B12, 1,000 micrograms. I take one every two, three days. Uh, I used to take 5,000 every other day, and that brought my levels up real high. So great yeah it brings up the levels real high when they do a blood test because it is found within your blood but the absorption is still an issue many many people cannot absorb it then in their tissues so what you really want to know is how much b12 or any other vitamin is in your tissue you would need a tissue sample to really find out important as endurance athletes uh, or an athlete in general so if you're an athlete and a runner, you should also check out my running channel, of course. I'll put a link to it here. Next up, omega-3. Again, tropical fruit has tons of omega-3 in the form of ALA. Tons. Because I'm eating less tropical fruit. Which fruit has substantial amounts of fat? Aside from durians or avocados, you have no oils in any other fruit. And more other things. My omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is a little bit skewed. So I need to up my omega-3 intake and I just do that by taking this. This is DHA and EPA and I'm not entirely... You only repeat that because you heard it. How do I know? Because everybody in the vegan community does it, myself included. Back in the day, I thought my issues come as well from a unbalance within the omega-3s and omega-6s. Once you start eating meat again, you don't feel any deficiencies. I can go weeks and weeks on end without any fish and simply eat red meat, which in theory has a bad omega-3 to omega-6 ratio, but you will feel fantastic. I decided personally on whether we need to supplement with omega-3 or not as a vegan, um, but I just opted for the safest choice and I, I, I went ahead and did it. So this The safest choice would be to eat fish. In this case here, you don't know what you're getting. Many studies actually showed that you can find solvents within those vegan omega-3 supplements. Algae-based omega-3. Yeah. Clean and pure. It's actually not clean, nor pure. And great. So... Nor great. Again, in a natural environment, in a natural diet, 
we would actually get, I think, sufficient amounts of omega-3. Of course, I forgot to name the obvious. None of those fruits you would find in nature in case you didn't get the memo. Those fruits are all man-made and cultivated. Most of those fruits are seedless as well. You wouldn't find them in nature. Just through the fruit. Just saying. But that's uh, sort of like a insurance policy. Just to be on the safe side. How? Oh. Iodine. So um, the soil, there's iodine issues all over the world really. Meat eaters and vegans alike have issues with uh, iodine. Actually, meat eaters also have issues with D and B12. People think, oh, vegans, they don't get B12. Actually, most of the people deficient in B12 are, are, are meat eaters. Yeah, well, because they're not meat eaters, they're not exclusive meat eaters or carnivores. They simply are already on a plant-based diet. If you look into the food pyramid, if you look into how people eat nowadays, they eat at least 80% plants within their diet. Of course, they are deficient. So it's, it's relevant for everyone. If the soil lacks everyone. iodine, the food will lack iodine. And I've looked at my blood tests and I've definitely noticed that I had a little bit of an iodine issue at one point, not a big one. I supplemented with iodine and it reversed. So now I take iodine once a day, 225 micrograms. Wow, man. And that's, uh, that's good. Again, if, you had, if we had perfect food in the perfect environment, we probably wouldn't need it. Iron. Think about your ancestors in that environment years ago when there were no supplements. You are probably the first generation in Norway to take supplements. So those people were healthy. Those people were in a natural environment. How did they do it? Hmm. You can get plenty of iron on a vegan diet. No problem. In fact, <laughs> no problem. But I still take a supplement though. It's, it's There's oh, wow. a lot of the vegan diets real healthy vegan diets with lots of uh, whole plant foods they have so much iron it's it's crazy but you don't want to have too much iron though and when you're eating meat you're actually getting something called heme iron mm -hmm. which is easier to absorb but it also sometimes causes more problems and leads to too much iron sometimes which can be a big a deadly problem actually Okay, so that leads to too much iron. The vegan diet has crazy amounts of iron, but you're gonna supplement iron. Anyway, yeah. I've okay. always had iron issues, even from back when I was eating meat, and that didn't help me at all. Um, How much meat did you eat? Even when I'm consuming quite big amounts of Actually, a little bit of anecdotal evidence here. The mother of my children was always anemic, always, and then went vegan. Of course, that didn't fix her issue. So she went to the doctor. They prescribed her iron supplements. It didn't do anything. Then she quit veganism, but for the first time in her life, she started eating a somewhat carnivorous ketogenic diet. Guess what? Now her iron levels are perfectly fine. Iron from... From plants, I'm still having some low iron issues. Could be due to my heavy training. Uh, could be due to genetic issues. Arrest my case. You're taking a supplement and you still have low iron levels because you're not absorbing it. It is always the same. If you start eating adequate amounts of red meat, you would reclaim your health. Just absorption issues. So I find that I need to supplement actually with a high dose, 100 milligrams. Of and that stuff actually oxidizes in your blood and is super toxic. Of iron to even just maintain my iron levels. Yeah, man. That might not apply to you though. Next up, calcium. And by now you're probably thinking, ah, can't you just eat some meat, eat some, drink some yeah, milk, bro. get calcium, yeah, or whatever? And you know, there's there are nutrients in those foods. Sure, you can get milk is a really solid source of calcium in terms of how much calcium is in milk, but it's also a source of natural hormones for cows yes it's really for cows not humans you know and the macro not macro necessarily hormones are hormones of course those food contain hormones but guess what you already took a hormone you took vitamin d3 that is a hormone we labeled it as a vitamin but it is a hormone it is naturally occurring in animal foods so are other hormones those hormones are beneficial to our health that's it and sort of profile doesn't really fit our nutrient needs ideally and we see that a lot of a lot of the diseases that we have in the modern day and age 
are actually caused by eating too much animal products and not enough fruits and vegetables. There is absolutely zero proof to that. Tropical frugivores. So even though I could get calcium from cow's milk, I'll get so much other stuff that I don't want along with that calcium that I've- Like quality protein and saturated fats? Yeah, who wants that? Was instead to do a supplement. And again, back to our original uh, diet. If I was to eat real tropical fruit, mm. getting enough calcium would be super, super easy. You can easily oh. get a thousand milligrams of calcium a day mm. just eating like mangoes and papayas. You sure about that? As long as you eat enough calories from fruit, you'll get enough calcium, iron. Why don't you do that then? Of the important nutrients. You won't get vitamin D and vitamin B12 because those are not dietary nutrients. They are environmental nutrients, sunshine, bacteria, meat, tropical fruit. I choose to supplement with a little bit of calcium, 500 milligrams a day, just to be on the healthy side of optimal calcium intake, especially one, two, three, four, five supplements. And you're talking about healthy, really important as a run. Okay, bro. Next up zinc. It's kind of the same thing as with uh, with iron, having some issues with absorption. I've never had issues with zinc though on my blood tests. I do blood tests like once every three months maybe, and they're usually wow. very good. Um, Why so? But because of that absorption issue, I'm thinking perhaps also there's an issue with zinc. So every two or three days, I take one zinc tablet, 15 milligrams, but um, I probably don't need to do that, but I do it anyway, just to be again on the safe side. As an athlete, sure. vitamin K2, <laughs> uh, kind of similar thing as the B12. And again, I'm not reacting here to judge you. I was in the same boat. I supplemented just as much, if not even more. But at some point, you will have to realize that you are on a deficient diet. This is why you do this. It has nothing to do with your environment. It has nothing to do with your lifestyle. It has nothing to do with you being an athlete. It has all to do with the vegan diet. A from greens, just a little bit of lettuce and fruits we and vegetables don't. in general has a lot of vitamin K and that converts. We get some vitamin K2 in fermented plant foods. However, it is not the MK4 version, which again makes it super hard to get absorbed. Converts, if at all. Via bacteria to K2. And I'm probably fine. I'm probably good. You know, sure. my bacteria in my intestines are probably making K2 right now. Of course. And there's no issue, but yep. I want to be on the safe side. So I decided to supplement with vitamin K2. And it's just again. He's not a dumb guy. I actually like him. Intuitively, he knows that he is lacking all of those nutrients. This is why he supplements them. And of course, he feels terrible. You can tell me what you want. I've been there and thousands of others have been there. Just looking at you, I know that you are suffering. We're here to help. And because I think I'm not being exposed to as much bacteria in my environment as I naturally would if I was living in the tropics as a... If you would eat raw fermented animal foods, you would get plenty of bacteria. ...ape in nature. And I am probably not having an opt... My, you know, my gut flora is probably not optimal mm -hmm. because I'm not eating again the, that absolutely optimal diet. So well, it could be pretty optimal still, but... Just to be on the safe side in terms of that, I decided to supplement with K2 as well. Mm -hmm. What else? That's it for the sort of normal supplements. And oh. then I have a few other ones. <laughs> wow. Uh, powders, basically. I take choline, city choline, mm -hmm. um, because I- Brain function? I had some strange issues with, with dizziness last uh, year. I still have it to some no. extent. And I, I was pretty desperate. I wanted to try everything. So I thought I'd introduce this. I am better now. I think that's for different reasons, but it doesn't hurt. Uh, you know, some people have genetic issues that means that they don't. You don't have any genetic issues. You are somewhat still a healthy young Norwegian male, and my heart goes out to you. You're just suffering because you're malnourishing yourself. That's it. Dizziness comes from your malnutrition. It comes from total depletion. If you continue with your athletic pursuits, running in this case, and your malnutrition, you will suffer and get neurodegenerative diseases. And I don't want that for you. Use as much choline 
and they should supplement and it's not because they're not eating meat or because no but it is it is exactly because they're not eating meat you can find again studies on that note where you see that choline levels creatine levels as well are depleted within vegans and vegetarians not eating this or that it's because they're actually have a genetic makeup so that they actually need extra choline it's everything else but the vegan diet the best way to of get course. extra choline now it's his genetics going to animal products which would cause different issues again health wise yeah they would make you healthy so i do that i also take a little bit of vitamin c now and then just because i well, most days you're eating fruit all you're getting is vitamin c man because again i'm not just i'm not getting the huge amounts of tropical fruits that i naturally would i'm getting plenty of enough vitamin c to stay healthy and alive yeah but um but 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 you're sick you're mentally ill now this is really the case and this is again not a judgment call or to attack you but you are truly mentally ill. You've been depleted for so long that your brain is lacking nutrients and now you cannot make a rational decision. You have to eat animal foods first in order to reclaim your health and then have a healthy brain that can make healthy decisions. Sort of again, looking really? for that optimal diet of lots of fruit and there would be a lot of vitamin C. So I think we probably, that's just my guess though. We thrive on a little bit more vitamin C. So I just increase it a little bit. This is pure uh, ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid is not pure vitamin C. I'm sure you know that. Uh, and then we're really getting into the performance realm here where my next supplements now are really focused on performance as a runner. So it doesn't matter if you're a meat eater or a vegan or whatever. If sure. you're looking to maximize your performance, your fitness, there are certain supplements that might contribute to that. First of all, it's protein, just adding in protein. It's not really a supplement. It's more of a, an actual food. No, it's actually a supplement. This is pea protein and soy protein. And I just add it in to my diet. And that's not because it's difficult to get enough protein on a vegan diet. It's actually pretty easy. <laughs> but it's all super easy it's super easy to get vitamin d3 b12 protein as well no worries but i'm going to supplement all of it because it's super easy because man i actually want to get admit quite it, a dude. lot of protein and that's just more convenient uh, and digests a little bit better for me than eating tons of uh, beans and lentils <laughs> but those exactly right and this is why it's not easy to get enough protein so in theory black beans have protein but in order for you to get 200 grams of protein out of black beans you will wreck your digestion you will get terribly sick this is why all of the vegans again my past included resort to protein powders this is the only way to get some amino acids into your blood are great foods too of course and they have plenty of protein as do Man. all foods all foods have protein some more than others mm -hmm. leucine and i take uh well i take leucine because it sort of again emphasizes Because you know exactly that you cannot find enough leucine within your plant-based protein sources. On the other hand, you have super high amounts of leucine within meat. You know that this is why you supplement it. Because again, intuitively, rationally, intellectually, you totally understand that the vegan diet is deficient. Increases that. And if meat is so bad because of leucine, because of the amino acid profile, etc., 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 why do you supplement exactly those nutrients? Protein synthesis, the muscle protein synthesis effect after training. Wow. Pretty well-documented effect. Um, I'm essentially doping, but in a healthy way <laughs> and using... Do you take creatine, bro? Eagle products and just basically trying to get the most out of my fitness. And then lately I've had doping. an injury, <laughs> tendon injury. So again, I'm going to the supplements. I'm pretty all in on the supplements right now yeah we'll see if that changes in the future but i don't see a problem with it it's it's just food really mm, and, sure. but i have 
been taken but it's not, three glide. But the good thing about this is that this is end stage veganism. So in the end stage of veganism, you try everything. You try everything to cling on to your vegan diet. And this is what I see here. This is what everybody sees. This is why you do this, because you are desperate. You try to make it work. But this, in most cases, is the last attempt. After supplementing everything, they realize they still feel miserable and then they drop out of veganism. Lysine, proline and lysine, amino acids that are essential in collagen formation. Okay, yeah. so that's the, that's the tendon formation in the body. You could simply supplement, if you love supplements so much, collagen. And so that sort but of helps do that? with tendon <laughs> repair. And that's what I want now that I have a tendon injury. Mm -hmm. uh, probably I'm gonna continue with it just to keep my tendons strong though. And um, if you think that it's possible just to take, t just to eat meat again, cartilage and get yeah. like um, collagen that way, bone broth, that is true. But yeah. again, you would get all those other negative things that you get from. What would you get if you read a so into supplements? Again, take hydrolyzed beef protein, take collagen supplements. So you would get rid of all the bad things, all the nasties. There would be no cholesterol in it, etc., etc. You believe it's bad. Why wouldn't you supplement such a supplement? You don't because you became religious. You bought into the cult doctrine. And this is why you have to resort to only plant-based supplements. They're not getting absorbed. They don't do anything. You will get further injured and further damage your body. Meat and dairy products. That's it. Uh, animal foods are just... In the scientific literature, it's quite clear that the bias is towards a whole food plant-based diet if you want to be healthy. Okay, so I just, I don't see how you can sort of Not incorporate animal foods without getting into trouble. I prefer then to just stick to the supplements. Plus, even if you did supplement with uh, collagen or, or foods that contain yeah. collagen, like cartilage and bone broth and all that, mm -hmm. um, that's not really that effective because it doesn't have as much glycine and that's really where the bottleneck is according right to on. some studies that I've read. Of course you will find some sort of excuse. Now pure collagen is not enough collagen, now you need the glycine. And only with synthesized plant-based glycine you can repair your tendons that you ruptured on a plant-based diet. Yes. So you really want to get glycine, that's the main thing. And these okay. two, I'm, I'm not really sure if I need those, glycine and proline. But uh, I don't want to take any chances and I just want to do the best that I can now that I have this tendon injury. That's right. Instead of eating a steak, I'm just going to take 37 supplements because I want to be on the safe side. Um, I have another one here. It's, it's not leucine actually, it's just in the leucine bag. And that's carnitine. Mm. Again, a nutrient that does exist in meat, uh, but we actually produce our own carnitine. But We actually produce our own, you know, it's not like it is deficient within the vegan diet, but I'm going to supplement that one as well. Some people have genetic disorders yeah, that make them produce genetic. less carnitine. Yeah. And those... Carnitine. Carne. Meat. It comes from the word meat. It is so obvious and you still cannot see it again not attacking you i used to watch your channel i'm coming here in peace i'm trying to help you out here you don't see it you can't see it because you're blinded you're still in the cult mentality and on top of that again your brain doesn't function please just try it do an experiment for two weeks straight just try eating fish for two weeks your brain will turn back on and you will see this for what it is it is just a bunch of chemicals they cannot make you healthy man people probably should wow. supplement with it and i don't know if i'm one of those people and again i had those weird dizziness issues last year and still um and um, some people will take that and say oh it's because you're vegan yeah bro i honestly don't think so i've really thought about all the different nutrients you thought about it but did you try it and for example you can always go back to veganism afterwards what will change in the grand scheme of things just try it out for two weeks eat a bunch of sushi sashimi a bit of salmon see where it takes you carnitine and and uh choline was two of those nutrients that i sort of incorporated because i wasn't sure and i was like could it be 
something that I'm lacking in my diet. End stage veganism. I haven't been able to come up with a good idea of what that could be. My blood test doesn't show Meat. any indicators that there's anything Meat. lacking. Meat. And I've also spoken to doctors and they, they agree that it, it seems to be something other than my diet. Sure. However, I do... Doctor is absolutely clueless. I had digestive issues on a daily basis. I had tooth pain. Teeth were rotting out. I was depressed. I had zero libido. I was going from doctor to doctor because I was stupid. Simple as that. Absolutely in denial. Absolutely delusional. Everybody that was somewhat sane would have seen that it was my vegan diet. I didn't see it. And guess what? The expert didn't see it either. I went to the doctors. I talked about it. I told them that I'm vegan. And nobody thought that the vegan diet would be an issue. It must be something else. I think actually that it relates it somehow wasn't. to sodium and electrolytes. Uh... I seem to be able to modify my dizziness somehow by modulating my intake of sodium. So it has to do with something like that, I think, which... It helps to have a balanced sodium and potassium intake that really can do wonders. Try it out if you must, but in the end, you won't escape your true natural diet, meat. Again, comes back to why do I have that in the first place? And I think that's actually because of the vaccine that I took back in 2016 against rabies. I got uh, some serious, serious side effects following that vaccine. I and I think I'm still struggling with it to this day. If you've been following the channel, I'm definitely not pro-vax. And therefore, yes, it could be that you have some side effects. However, the dizziness that you're experiencing now is your depletion. Otherwise, it would have started right after the jab. You're simply getting more and more depleted. Look at your eyes. Look at your skin. You can tell, man. It doesn't take a rocket scientist. Again, just try it out for two weeks. A long video after all. But yeah. those are my supplements. Uh, pretty crazy when you look at it like that. Yeah, sure. But really, you know, when you're eating a food like a banana or whatever, you're getting thousands of different nutrients, okay? It's all in there. And if you just increase... It's all that, it's in there. The banana is man-made, as I said before. We never ate bananas. On the Balkan, for example, where my parents are from, we never had bananas until the 90s. Those people don't even know what a banana is. Those bananas have been cultivated. Those bananas are seedless. Of course, they do not contain everything we need. Animals do. The content a little bit. That would just be like eating a fruit with a little bit more vitamin C. That wouldn't really be a problem. Uh, and that's the case for most of these nutrients. I, I'm taking them in amounts that are proven to be safe by studies. I am essentially trying oh. to mimic our natural fruit diet. No, what you're actually trying to mimic is a... <laughs> Man, I can't believe this. You're trying to mimic meat. This is why you take carnitin. This is why you take colon. This is so damn obvious. No fruit has carnitin or colon. And looking <laughs> at literature of, you know, what's the optimal nutrition profile, etc. And just amazing, essentially man. experimenting and trying to tweak things to optimize as well as I can in a situation that's... That's an obsessive disorder. You really try to reinvent the wheel. That's what you're doing. You're trying to find those nutrients somewhere. Just eat a steak. Optimal. Being outside of the tropics and not eating a tropical fruit diet. So you are a white male. You do not belong into the tropics. I found a way to live pretty healthy, I think. I'm pretty happy about this. Um, You're happy about this. I'm happy with the supplements and I'm happy with the foods. Uh, although I would be happier with a tropical fruit diet, I'm pretty happy like this as well. And I feel healthy, uh, except for my weird dizzin dizziness issues, I guess. Mm -hmm. And my fitness and training is going pretty well, except for my little injury. But hey, uh, there's always challenges in life. And sure. uh, overall, I'm pretty content. If you have All right, and this is it. The video is long enough, so I'm going to cut it off right here. Again, I wish you well. No hate video here. I really want you to reclaim your health. Take my advice or leave it up to you. If I were you, actually, I was you, kind of similar. I ditched those supplements and I started eating fish. After two weeks, you won't be able to deny it. The proof is in the pudding, as they say. Give it a shot or not. Anyways, guys, this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel further, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. As always, 
May God bless you all. Much love and peace.